Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sonic the Hedgehog and Unfortunate History, a panel about Sonic the Hedgehog. And I mean, I don't need to read the second line. You already know it's there. It's a panel about Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm Max. I'm Andrew. And together, we are the foundation for the preservation of Gen 1 Pokemon. You can follow us on Twitter and Discord and that meme link you can't follow us on, but it's there. I thought QR codes would be more fun. Someone's doing, which one are you going for? Go for the meme. I'm gonna try for Twitter. Oh no, I got the wrong angle. Brave, based on the current state of Twitter. <laughs> no one gave me a blue sky link. I'm not cool enough. Anyway, so before we start this panel, we have to gauge how much you know about uh, the Sonic franchise. Clearly he knows fucking nothing because he likes Shadow of the Hedgehog. But the rest of you might have a chance. So we're going to quiz you on various Sonic the Hedgehog characters. So if you believe that this is a character, raise your hand. If you do not believe it is a character, do not raise your hand. Do not ask about raising both hands. Do not ask about raising your feet. Do not ask about pitching a tent. Please don't ask those questions. Just raise a fucking hand. <laughs> also, if you pitch a tent, just leave. Uh, <laughs> this panel is not for you. So with that, is this a... So oh, I turned it off again. <laughs> is this a Sonic the Hedgehog character? Raise your hand if yes. You know the fucking answers. You were here two months ago. Okay, wh which, which character is it? Did you raise your hand? That's Elon Musk. Yeah, Elon Musk. No, no, which Sonic character is Elon Musk? No, which Sonic character is he? The Sonic character of Elon Musk. No, I mean, you're right. It's Dr. Robotnik. <laughs> I was trying to get you to say his name another way. Oh. You know how it is. Yeah. Though, I mean, I think at this point, Dr. Robotnik is a character of Elon Musk. Like, we've kind of flipped around. Uh, next up, is this a Sonic the Hedgehog character? They don't believe Max. It's also Robotnik. <laughs> it's just the better Robotnik. Oh. <laughs> they they kind of didn't OC do not steal. <laughs> Okay, next up, is this a Sonic the Hedgehog character? Jesus Christ, none of you guys have played Sonic. <laughs> okay, which one is it? I'm gonna say Big the Cat. You're right, it's Woo! Big the Cat. Uh, not to be confused with my OC, Bigger the Catter. Do not steal. Uh, next up, is this a Sonic the Hedgehog character? This is, of course, the Sailor Moon AMV for crawling in my skin. <laughs> All right, which character is it? I'm gonna shoot for Amy Rose. No. Oh. Here's the thing. None of you have figured out the bit here. They're all Sonic characters. <laughs> <laughs> this one's Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> Do right. we need to give them caffeine? I don't know. It, it's early. I think we should forgive them. I mean, if you'd like to. I don't. I need it myself. Anyways, this is Sonic the Hedgehog character. Uh, that's Blaze the Cat. Hell yeah! yeah. <laughs> and Sing huh? I understood that reference. Single-handedly burned my dad's house down. Blaze the fucking cat. And then, of course, the last one is, um, that time that you were realized you were sexually attracted to anthropomorphic animals, is that a Sonic the Hedgehog character? Nailed it. One, yeah, see, you, you guys figured it out. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like we have a ways to go with all of you, which is good because the content wasn't gonna change if you got everything right. So before we talk about Sonic, we are going to have to talk about Sega and the origins of Sega. And uh, how Sega started was they sold, why are you laughing? <laughs> this is a serious panel. <laughs> Uh, so Sega started by selling gambling machines to sailors. That was their start. They were called service games, and they did that until the United States decided to ban loot crates. <laughs> so they had to stop selling gambling machines to sailors, because you know they're already gambling their lives away. They can't also gamble away the $5 we give them. Uh, so Sega decided, though, you know, we're good at making games about four sailors, so we might as well make a game about being a sailor. So they released Periscope. Now, Periscope is a clunky motherfucker of a cabinet that has that big, you know, Periscope that you look into kind of like it's a, a virtual boy. 
and you look around and you shoot down chips. And it was moderately successful. Uh, none of you probably remember it, though its legacy lives on because the Periscope created these standardized 25 cents per play arcade cabinets. Before the Periscope, arcade machines were cheaper. Sega came out, charged 25 cents because that thing was a bitch to make. And then everyone else is like, wait, people pay 25 cents for two minutes of metal slug? Let's do it. <laughs> So at this point, you know, they've been doing a good job making games, so they decide they're gonna commit to the bit and do what anyone would do, anyone who's making arcade cabinets in the 1980s would do, and that is of course develop a video game console. Why make your own games when you can make a console for some goddamn reason? <laughs> uh, yeah, now you do have games at home, yeah. You don't have to go to McDonald's anymore. So the Sega SG-1000 came out and uh, it did not sell well. But Sega was undeterred. So they did something that you're going to know them for doing very well in the future, which was recoloring it and slapping on OC Do Not Steal. Because these are all the same fucking console. Uh, they went so crazy, they even made a Sega Master System girl. <laughs> which is good because, you know, they could finally sell video game consoles in the pink aisle next to the Barbies. And overall, it worked okay for Sega. Now, the good part about Sega, the Sega Master System was its incredibly high attachment rate. For those of you who are unfamiliar, the attachment rate is the average number of games purchased per console sold. For the NES, it was eight. Eight to 10 is pretty normal. Most of you are going, wait, really? Only eight to 10 games per console. I know, I had that same reaction, uh, which means I'm probably a Sega Master System owner because the attachment rate for that console was 21, which is the highest of any console, at least when I made this panel in 2019. Uh, don't ask how they handle digital sales, I do not know. So even though the uh, Master System was outsold by the NES nearly three to one internationally, because its attachment rate was so high, they almost kept parity on games sold. And as you can tell from the map, it did really well in Western Europe, uh, over there in Western Japan, uh, Australia, I just want to use the laser pointer, I'm gonna be honest, <laughs> and Brazil. And you might be wondering, why, why Brazil? And you know, we'll get into that, but here's the thing. Of the 22 million sales, eight million were in Brazil. And Brazil is still selling master systems. You can go into the store and you'll see a PS5, an Xbox, whatever the fuck number they're on. <laughs> and you're like, no, I would like the Sega master system. And it sells about 150,000 units a year, last I checked, which means in about 240 years, Sega will finally catch Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, the reason it sold so well, uh, Sega hired Tonka to market their consoles outside of Japan. If there's one thing Tonka and Brazil have in common, it's an absolute hatred of rainforests. <laughs> so I really think for every master system sold, they promised to cut down another anchor of rainforest and replace it with cows. Uh, so with that, you know, they have a console, it sold a unit, that's really enough to motivate these fuckers to make another one. Uh, so we got the Sega Genesis. I know, exciting, right? Yeah. With, with, I mean. High definition graphics. Huh? There's high definition graphics. Hell yeah, 16 bit. I mean, it came out two years before the Super Nintendo. It looked really cool for its time. And as we all know, with the launch of the Genesis, the pack in title, one of the best games ever made. Ultra, wait, what the fuck is this? I what? thought it came with Sonic. Nope, uh, this is just where Sega got their furry start. <laughs> It was so obvious so long ago, <laughs> and nobody realized it. So uh, yeah, it came out with Altered Beast. No one cared. Who here has played Altered Beast? Wow. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm sorry, but wow. Well, you wooed at the furry part, so I get that. <laughs> I think these people probably know more about Sonic than us, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, probably. <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, Altered Beast, uh, 
This Room out, Outstanding was not a well-selling game. <laughs> uh, so the Sega Genesis didn't have a good start, so Sega decided to hire fucking Tom Kalansky. <laughs> There are dozens, I know, I'm so, good job. Uh, I don't know what you're, it's, not, it's 10 a.m., I'm not awake. <laughs> I was up till midnight, I woke up at five. <laughs> anyway, they hired this motherfucker, and uh, he was the one who decided, hey, what if we just, you know, threw Sonic at everybody? Uh, so Tom Klansky, before working for Sega, sold Barbies. Now I know that doesn't sound like a particular, <laughs> I like that, like yeah. yeah. I know that doesn't sound like a particularly difficult task, but you have to remember he sold Barbies before they were popular. Because when Barbie came out, everybody was really confused that the doll had boobs. And like at toy shows, they would genuinely inspect it to confirm if it was anatomically correct. And I think we all know, in this current climate, how fucking insane parents are about anything vaguely sexual in their children. So the fact that this man was still able to sell Barbies to those fucking crazy people is a testament. And with that, he went to Sega of Japan, and he went, okay, we're gonna sell the Genesis. You're trying to compete with the NES. We're $200, the NES is 100. We're gonna cut it down to 150. We're gonna include your only game that people want, Sonic. <laughs> and Sega was like, wait, why the fuck would we do that? And he's like, just, you just want people to own your fucking console. They'll buy games, don't worry about it. And then we have this, fuck. Yep, so now that we've gotten Tom Clancy in the packing in of Sonic, we actually need to talk about Sonic, the creation God and damn it. of Sonic. Which, uh, promise, please never Google search. Um, he has it. definitely Googled the inception of Sonic. <laughs> you think I'm a yeah, bad man? Yes. I'm yeah, we, we do think you hate <laughs> All right, so anyways, but Nintendo had this wonderful poster boy in their console, and that, of course, being Mario. Oh, uh, not that one. <laughs> that one doesn't sound right. Yeah, there we go. So, but a poster boy, it kind of gives your kind of face association, so people see this character and they associate it with your console. They think, oh, that looks fun, I wanna play that, so I'm gonna, gonna get that console. Sega really didn't have that. They had Altered Beast and Alex the Kid. Um, yeah, they, there's not cutting it, so. Wait, is that for Alex the Kid? Absolutely. Sega's best games aren't Sonic games. Have you played the Enchanted Castle? Say what? Have you played the Enchanted Castle? No. Good. Yeah, so anyways, it just wasn't cutting it, so Sega realized they needed to create something that was gonna more directly compete with Mario. So they went for the opposite approach. Nintendo and Mario were kinda slow, so their character had to be really fast. <laughs> Mario used two buttons, so Sonic had to have one button, because we all know nobody uses more than one button. That's why the paint rubbed off your W key. Mario is red, so Sonic has to be blue and have a crippling cookie addiction. Mario, very wholesome. Sonic, edgy as shit. Mario punches animals in fisticuffs. Sonic hurts them in a much more roundabout way. Mario had a movie that was horrible. And so the Sonic movie was so much worse that the internet had to fix it for them. <laughs> and of course, Mario, very timeless. Everyone loves him. Sonic was dated the moment he came out. <laughs> but honestly, his original concept design was they just took, took Mickey Mouse's character design and slapped Felix that cat's head on it. And it's like, so they're basically cousins now. <laughs> um, but the original... <laughs> the first instance of OC Do Not Steal. Yeah. So, so the original concept had things like they called him Mr. Needle Mouse, and they had great ideas, like giving him a human girlfriend, because that's what we all love about Sonic. <laughs> but, okay, you're not allowed to snap anymore. <laughs> But anyways, so when Sega of Japan came up with this idea, they started shopping around to the other departments, and they, decided, and they were told that this would never fly in America. Americans needed something more Americanized for it. So they suggested ideas like make him a regular hedgehog from Nebraska, have him join the local track team, uh, help old ladies knitting with his spines, and then one day his father falls into radioactive waste and dies. I don't know why Sega of Japan didn't take this, because clearly America knows how to do Sonic. 
I mean, look, they even they knew about this, which is why they made him play sports in the movie. Um, but anyways, now we should actually talk about the games. Um, because I assume that's why most of you are here, because you've played a Sonic game, or you like making fun of Sonic games, like us. Um, but basically, it was a very interesting concept, where platformers at the time were very methodical, where precision jumping and problem solving were kind of the name of the game. Just playing it out for him. Yeah. So Sonic changed this formula by making it fast equals good. So going slow puts you on the slower and longer path, so you're rewarded for going fast. But that leads into the second part of the design, where it was uh, uh, skill through repetition, not through problem solving or observation. Because you're going fast, you're, you're not going to be able to make the jump the first or the second time. You're going to go into the spikes, you're going to go into the pit, you're going to die. But at some point, you start making those jumps, so you start getting better and going through that higher path and die less. So you, it's, and it kind of gives you that fun sense of speed that you really didn't have any other, any other games at the time. Aside from like racing games, that was more of like a top down or a backwards kind of view. But it really didn't really do anything with the plot. It was very boilerplate, you know, super villain, cute animals, shoves them into giant robots, magic stones to save the day. So it really, really didn't explore with the plot, but it was enough to make people, it was enough to make people love the game. And then for Sonic 2, it really didn't reinvent anything. It just added a second playable character, Ninetales, um, and the spin dash so you could kind of tack things without stopping because people wanted to go fast. It sold six million units, second only to the first Sonic. Um, and it was also one of the first games for a, with a global release, where it came out in Japan and the US at the same time, which was kind of novel for the time. And I'm not kidding, they changed his name to Tails in the US because we couldn't stomach a miles per hour joke because his real name in Japan is Miles Per Hour. Because apparently we get upset about the weirdest things here. <laughs> Cancel and the, culture truly has run amok. <laughs> and of course, we have Sonic 3. It was somehow released in America before Japan, even though it was made by a Japanese company. And it was designed in two parts, and the soundtrack was going to be made with a certain famous musician. Just that famous musician turned out to be a child diddler. Uh, not That's, that one. No. S no. Uh, Those are allegations. No. no. All right, here we go. Yes. <laughs> Michael Jackson actually made some of the music for Sonic 3. Deep into production, um, it, the accusation started to come out, so they had to redo all the music for Sonic 3. By which I mean they just removed his name from everything and did the OC Do Not Steal. And Every Sonic 3 was time. really where they actually started to expand on the formulas. They had larger <laughs> levels, kind of added more of a story. Funny enough, it started development as a 3D game, which got cut and later became Sonic 3D Blast, which was not a blast. Um, so with the 3D kit and cut, they needed to stick to what they knew, and they made another 2D side-scroller and add new characters. And then again, they ran out of time, and this was cut, um, which became two games. The first being Sonic 3, the second being, of course, and Knuckles. Uh, so it introduced Knuckles, who we all know can show us the way, and to allow for this, it had to come with a lock-on adapter because they felt Game Genie was getting too much of that lock-on adapter market. Um, but they realized it had to be backwards compatible. So you could plug in the older Sonic games to it too, and it added Knuckles. Like you could plug in Sonic 3, and instead of having Sonic and Tails, it added Knuckles. Sonic 2 worked with it, and again, added Knuckles. But during development, someone asked, well, what happens if somebody plugs in a non-Sonic game? So of course, it's got to replace someone with Sonic. So Toe Jam and Earl? No, 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 we got Toe Jam and Knuckles. <laughs> Earthworm Jim? Nope. Earthworm Knuckles. And they did this with every Genesis game, even VR chat. <laughs> But games wasn't the only kind of market they uh, tried to push Sonic into because they had a successful IP in the 90s. And what's the best way to make money off a successful IP in the 90s, Max? I would say sugar cereal and Saturday morning cartoons. Damn straight. Hell yeah. So they promptly went into the Saturday morning cartoon space with the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. And we're pretty sure this was the result of the CIA first experimenting with LSD, because boy, did they need to turn down that dosage. Um, this, whoever was writing this was on some serious drugs. The entire show was a giant acid trip. Just look at the backgrounds. Wild, nonsensical. Storylines make no sense. And just <laughs> the strangest things. I, I think that's Tails trying to rescue Sonic's dad from the pit of acid. 
said. <laughs> but I mean, just look at some of the storylines they had. They had Sonic falling in love with a robot, Eggman becoming the Red Baron and joining the German Air Corps for World War I, and then Sonic deciding to play Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> so someone had to be high on something to come up with all this shit. At least they had some fun PSAs at the end of every episode where you learned important life le lessons, like don't stick your hand in a blender. Look at least one way when crossing the freeway. And uh, if the dog's mouth is foaming, make sure your little brother pets it first. You're the younger brother, right? Yeah. How many times did that happen to you? Um, no comment. <laughs> I plead the fifth. Um, so, and then the, the following year, the drugs are out of their system, and they made a show that actually added a plot to the Sonic kind of world. So it really kind of showed how Eggman was evil, why Sonic was fighting against Eggman, why the robots had animals in them, and kind of flushed out the world. It was a very interesting, like, tech dystopia. And honestly, it did a good job, not just inspiring furries, um, <laughs> but it was number nine on all the Saturday morning cartoon shows, and it was very unique. In fact, the world was so unique and fun that the comic books just picked the world up and ran with it. They didn't add new characters are, for a while. They just took that world that the show had and just kept going with are, it. Are you saying that the Sonic franchise ran with it? I'm glad you caught that joke, Max. <laughs> But you anyways, can continue. Um, and so, th and these comments were done by the Archie group. Yeah, the guy, the redhead who can't figure out women. Yes, they were done by them. Um, and somehow, it worked really well. They did this for over 20 years. In fact, Sonic the Hedgehog had the Genesis, or the uh, Guinness Book of World Records. Uh, Award for the longest franchise-based comic book series. It went for 290 issues until they decided to transfer it over to IDW fairly recently. And then now, now they're making it. Um, so anyways, of course, the next Saturday morning cartoon show they did was Sonic Underground. Um, yeah, they were back on the drugs again. <laughs> we couldn't keep it away from them um, because they just doubled down. Uh, it's basically Star Wars ripoff with music replacing the force, you know, like twins separated at birth, but it's triplets this time and ma mu magic powers tying them together. It's just the power of hard rock to save the world. Uh, who comes up with this stuff? Anyways, uh, at least it led to p important things like Led Zeppelin, by which I mean the name because uh, this show was a dumpster fire. <laughs> Oh yeah, this thing. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Sonic's over at Sega again. Okay, so with Sonic, you know, being a, a cultural phenomenon in the 90s for some reason, you know, same with like Skip It's and the Macarena. <laughs> yeah, the 90s didn't know what to do. Uh, the Sega, Gen so Sonic did propel the Genesis. As you can tell, um, in it basically kept pace with the Super Nintendo, despite having an absolute awful first two years. Like, the, the Super Nintendo caught up with the Genesis like overnight, but then they were able to keep pace. Uh, the thing is, this is only non-Japanese markets. Uh, this is how it sold in Japan. Uh, the Genesis was not only outsold by the Super Nintendo, but by the Turbo, Turbo Graphic 16. Yeah. <laughs> I knew one person was gonna cheer that for some reason. Um, huh? <laughs> yeah, you're so sad. Uh, so it, it didn't do well, and Sega of Japan, I mean, Sega, you know, being based in Japan, does not like this. Uh, that first graph is all cool and shit, but that second graph is a real problem, and they're gonna prioritize fixing that second graph over that first graph going forward. So, with all of this credibility, how should they squander it? You know, the Genesis is selling well, it's been on the market a while, so it's a little behind the other consoles, so they need to keep up. Case one of keeping up, the 32X. Yeah. When applied to a Sega Genesis, it looks like this. <laughs> so, Sega wanted to make a console as a stopgap between the Genesis and the Saturn. And by the time they realized you know, what they were gonna make, they knew when the Saturn was gonna come out. And they'd be like, okay, so this console that's 32-bit would run one or two years and then get replaced. So, you know, bad idea. Absolutely ruined faith in the company. However, uh, they still liked the idea, so it ended up just becoming an add-on for the Genesis that let you play games 32-bit. Um, by the time it released in the United States, the Saturn was already out in Japan. <laughs> So it sold really well for one day, and then another, and then 
a, another, not another unit moved after that. Uh, so 32x, bad idea. Uh, next up we have the Sega CD. Uh, when applied to a Genesis, it looks like this. <laughs> so the Sega CD had a little bit more going on for it to justify its existence. One, it could play CDs, which was cool and hip at the time. Um, there was this transition to disk-based consoles kind of in between uh, gens four, Gen 4 and Gen 5 of the video game console market. So this was Sega kind of trying to bridge that gap. Another fad of games at the time was real-life filmed cutscenes. Yeah. Oh. The 90s were weird, and the Sega CD let you do that. So. That's the point of the Sega CD, uh, not the worst thing. Next up, we have uh, Sega VR, <laughs> uh, which was uh, Sega's second attempt at building the Virtual Boy. Remember, the first was the, the um, Periscope console. So how the VR worked was Tom Klansky showed up at the company who was making it, and like, hey, you guys have VR tech, you should show me. And they showed him, and he went, this is awful. I have a headache and a migraine, and I'm dizzy. And he left and then they made the Virtual Boy. <laughs> it was not a joke. Same company. He gave Nintendo a lot of sloppy seconds. Uh, next up, we have the Genesis uh, karaoke add-on. That's Japan only. <laughs> because like, we don't do karaoke here. This is America. We sing in our cars. <laughs> That's what they're for, right? Singing in traffic. Uh, so yeah, this exists. Next is the Tetra Drive. Uh, this is a fully functioning computer slash fully functioning Sega Genesis. That sounds pretty cool, right? It came out in 1991 and it cost $1,100 in 1991 money. I didn't bother checking the conversion rate, but if you want to buy one of these used on eBay now, it's going to set you back 20,000 bucks. It does not come with a monitor. That's, that's uh, unfortunately. But you know, if you want to, I don't know why you'd ever fucking want this. Uh, and when you put all of this stuff together, this is what the Sega Genesis looks like. <laughs> Which is honestly very reminiscent of those mail order homes you used to be able to get. Like, oh, let's just buy a new mezzanine. And we all know how well that worked out for Sears. Aww. And if you combine those with the Game Genie and the Sonic and Knuckles game, it looks like this. <laughs> you think I'm only going to use that joke once? You have to do it twice. Uh, so with that, we enter the Sega Saturn era. <laughs> Sega Sanjiro died for our sins. <laughs> yeah. I'm upset that I always forget to include him in this panel. Uh, but, I mean, Sega Ta Sanshiro is a hero. If you haven't seen Sega Ta Sanshiro videos, go on YouTube, watch them. Right, You can leave the room to watch them. Honestly, it's a better use of your time. <laughs> so, uh, option one for the Sega Saturn. Sega works with Project Reality. You know, the people who made the N64 go vroom. Uh, Tom Kalansky met with them. And he was like, hey guys, love your tech. I'm gonna try to get that to be in the new Sega Saturn. So he goes to Sega of Japan. He's like, hey, we've got great tech to make the Sega Saturn. And Sega of Japan had one question, and it was, what country is this company based in? And he said America, and they said no. So uh, Sega decided they were not going to use a competent company to make their next console. So Tom Kalansky gave them Nintendo's number. And then they made the N64. Option two, work with PlayStation for some reason. Uh, after Nintendo left Sony at the altar, Sony was very eager to get into the video game market for revenge, basically. And Sega was an option for that. And Sega and Sony ended up drafting a contract that turned out to be really bad for Sega and functioned entirely on the premise that Sega would be a better video game producer than Sony. Wow. So Sega decided to also bail on Sony. And don't worry, Sony has no hard feelings and is definitely not going to, again, enter the video game market for revenge, basically. Uh, problem three, this is the fucking controller. <laughs> it's a UFO with feet. Or a Walkman. Yeah, yeah, it's a Discman, I like that. No, this thing is just... <laughs> And again, Sonic needs one button. I don't know what they're doing here. 
Uh, so with that, what did the Sega Saturn look like? Well, Sega's big head. They they made the console do uh, polygons, uh, sorry, quadrilaterals instead of like normal triangle polygons that the other companies were making for. So it was a bitch to program for. And the Saturn ended up having two discrete CPUs because after they saw some tech demos of the PlayStation 1, they went, oh shit, this is better than what we've got. So they duct taped another CPU to the console. <laughs> And then, to top it all off, they decided to have the single best E3 presentation of all time, when they announced, hey everybody, surprise, the Sega Saturn is now available. Uh, did uh, game developers know this was happening? No. Oh, no. <laughs> did the companies that sold the Sega Saturns know this was happening? No. Oh, no. So they had a small stockpile, because again, they were planning on a launch six months out. So they did not have enough Sega Saturns to go around to consumers. They did not have enough Sega Saturns to go around to uh, companies. So KB Toys didn't get any, and decided to boycott Sega going forward. A move that somehow did not work out for them. <laughs> And it only had like three fucking games on launch and not another game to come out for six months. So as far as a way to, you know, get consoles in people's homes before the PS1 came out, which was $100 cheaper, it absolutely failed. And I mean... But it's tried in Japan. We're not, we don't care. Um. <laughs> I care. Thank you. This is America. <laughs> USA! USA! <laughs> but, so you're going to ask, did the Sega Saturn come with a Sonic game? And uh, most people would say no, but yeah, I would say Yeah, and that's the, the yes. right thing. It didn't have one. No, that's no, no. the Sonic one Extreme thing they did right. Sonic totally came out. It wasn't a fever dream I had years ago. I'm, 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 I'm swearing this. All those media outlets were lying to you because they were having so much fun playing it they didn't want to share. It was truly wonderful and not buggy at all. Did they just like buy all the copies up to huh. do like, you know, New York Times bestseller scheme? Yeah, all, all like 10 of them. Player's Choice Sonic Extreme. I can't find it. Anyway, so now that Sega has uh, burned themselves internationally, but yeah, they're still doing okay in Japan. Uh, it's time for the Sega Dreamcast. Yeah. Fair. So, to be clear, Sega of Japan did want to ruin the Dreamcast. Uh, they wanted it to also be a fully functioning Sega Saturn. <laughs> yeah, they wanted it to hit the market as a fully functioning Sega Saturn and it would have cost $400, which is 100 more than the PS2 and 200 more than the Dreamcast ultimately cost. Uh, so things the Dreamcast did well, it had a modem so you could play games online. Um, it was disc based. Uh, I don't know how to feel about the UMDs still, but we'll say it. Uh, graphically, it is worse than the PS2, but it would have at least functioned throughout the generation. And most importantly, it was only $200. Like, this would have been a perfectly fine console if Sega wasn't following up the goddamn Saturn. <laughs> Well, on the plus side, it at least had a Sonic game. So now we gotta talk about modern Sonic games. Now with 3Ds. Um, so it started in the Dreamcast era with Sonic Adventure. With this new generation, they wanted to make everything fresh and new styles. And I quote, they wanted to give characters new edgy designs. And we see how well that turned out. I mean, to be fair, that like, light reflection is blinding me. Yeah. Um, but they also wanted to do inventive and new game experiences. So in a game about Sonic and going fast, they decided to include fishing because that's what we want. Um, I believe I, was, I heard that they only put fishing in there because some developer had mocked out a fully functioning fishing rod in the engine, and they were like, yeah, let's just use it. To be fair. Waste to, an effort. To be clear, you could buy Bass Fisher for the Dreamcast. It existed. I have it. <laughs> but, and, and then they decided that they yes. wanted other include fast, fast paced experiences, so they added a slow on rail shooter sections. So, uh, yeah, it just, they really didn't get what people liked about Sonic, and they just kept shoveling everything in there. So next we have uh, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, or Adventure 2 if you're just playing it on the Dreamcast because you don't have friends. And this game is pretty was pretty well received at the time, and I think we can all agree that the critics were doing the drugs 
for Sonic Underground. <laughs> In retrospect, I think we can all agree that this game is basically just City Escape plus the Chow Garden, and then a bunch of bullshit you have to plow through to get better animals to feed your Chow. Yeah. There is, there is nothing else good about this fucking game. It is at best a 69 nice. I almost got all the emblems. <laughs> you what? I almost got all the emblems. Almost. <laughs> I'm at 170. Well, then you get yeah, to 180. Well, yeah, that's not enough. <laughs> All right. I need more to go. Next up, we have... Why, why, this game has been out 20 years. How have you not gotten them yet? You have to give it a time. Clearly you have. You have 170. <laughs> All right. And next up, we, of course, have Sonic Heroes, um, where they decided they had to slam their OCs <laughs> into everything. Uh, the rumored fifth team was just going to be your dad and his two coworkers, because at this point... It was more likely for someone to be in a Sonic game than not. Um, and again, they didn't really follow their own formulas of going fast. Uh, they're like, all right, let's put three people together so you have to go slow and like do thoughtful platforming. It's just like, come on, guys. They, they don't understand what we want about Sonic. Talking, speaking of not understanding what we want in a Sonic game, unless you're that fucking guy, <laughs> we have... Yeah. We have... Uh, we have Give a Hedgehog a Gun. Yeah. The game. Which, yeah, the, the game, the experience, the elementary school visit. Uh, which has, you know, a complex morality system. And they're swearing. Isn't the, isn't the morality just who you shoot, <laughs> not whether you shoot or not? Yeah, that is important. Hey, who you shoot matters. Do you aim for the teacher? <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> this okay. is just My Chemical Romance, the game. <laughs> All right. And then, of course, the follow-up to this was Sonic 06. Um, I don't want to talk about this one. Just Dude, wait, no. It. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, it might crash the power. Why did you bug my computer? I mean, it's just Sonic 06. It's just so buggy. Uh, I'm sure everyone agrees with this if you aren't too busy clipping into the floor. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so it also had fantastic decisions like the relationship with the human women because they agreed, oh, we got to go back to our roots and add that back. Um, and again, it just wasn't people them just not understanding what people want on that Sonic or understanding how to make a game in general. They fired their entire QA department, I bet. Um, but then we had Sonic Unleashed. You mean Altered Beast 2. <laughs> um, it was something that was better because uh, the bar was that low. Um, also, werehog, that's, that's not what that word means. And werewolf, wolf is the part that means wolf, not were. So a werehog would be a human turning into a hedgehog. Um, but the daytime With levels, which I think is uh, Chris Chan's dream. Mm. Oh, boy. Oh, dear. oh, boy. But the daytime levels were honestly very good for 3D Sonic. They were fast. They had the branching pass with the higher and lowers and faster and slower. So it was honestly quite good. But they decided that over half the game needed to be slow beat-em-up sections, the sum of which took over an hour to do a single level. It was not good. Um, I'm also screaming inside. <laughs> And of course, next up is um, Sony, uh, Sonic and Monty Python and the Holy Grail's Black Knight. So I think at this point we can all agree that the Sonic franchise has just been stealing ideas from movies they found in a bargain bin. Uh, we have Monty Python and the Holy Grail's Black Knight. Uh, sorry, no, just Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Sorry, I had Ultimate Showdown <laughs> brain. Uh, before that, we had an American Werewolf in London. Uh, yeah, good movie, bad fucking game adaptation, am I right? <laughs> And this is just, this is that game, you know, where your friend who's into Sonic, so you, keeps going, I swear, Max, the next Sonic game's going to be good. And they play it, and they're like, no, it's good this time, I promise. And you go, no, Tyler, you're wrong. It's not good. It hasn't been good in so long. Like, the credibility of the franchise is down the drain. No one approves of it anymore. I mean, Sonic Team even briefly lost the rights in a custody battle to some random friend who sued them. <laughs> and that fan did a good job, I guess. Yeah, a better game than most what Sonic Team's done in a long time. I mean, I don't, I, here's the thing. I genuinely, I, I refuse to play this on principle because at some point, you know, once bitten, twice shy, I'm not fucking around. I'm not trying another Sonic game. I'm good. 
All right, and then of course, we, next one we had was Sonic Forces. Um, because all those dumpster fires were really starting to put those financial straits on Sega. So they needed to make something that would be a big hit. Um, so Furry Generator. Um, they knew their fandom was weird, and they wanted their money, so they decided to raid their wallets in the most direct fashion possible. <laughs> And now, of course, we've also got the Sonic the Hedgehog movies. Um, it's probably one of the most recognizable parts about modern Sonic nowadays. Because if you see these movies, but you know the real deal. These movies aren't about Sonic the Hedgehog. They're about Jim Carrey as Eggman. He's 100% the only reason to watch those movies and the only reason they're good. I mean, no, that's not, I mean, they're not good movies. I know that's a hot take. I don't like the Sonic movies, though I do have a big problem with Sonic 2, which is that it made me want to fuck Knuckles the Echidna. <laughs> Which I have never wanted to do. But if you're gonna voice something by Idris Elba, everyone's gonna wanna fuck it. And that's just not right. <laughs> like, I mean, look at that man. I watched Beast. That movie's trash. But he's in it. <laughs> All right, and then our next, the final game is, of course, Sonic Frontiers. Because um, it only took them five years to copy Breath of the Wild when it took Genshin Impact only three. Um, but really, playing through it, it feels like kind of a cheap Breath of the Wild clone. Collectible puzzles spread out everywhere, leveling system based on the collectibles for no goddamn reason, and lots of copied piano riffs. And the final boss fight is a quick time event with three button presses, wait, which is unacceptable. Wait, three button presses? It should be one. Yeah, it should be one. That's what Sonic is based off of, one button. It's been one button in every game up until now, and they fucking ruined the credibility. This is what ruined Sonic. Not 06. Not Shadow the Hedgehog. The fact that Sonic from Frontiers had a quick time event with more than one button. <laughs> the worst part is, like, even if you do like the secret ending, the final boss turns into like an asteroid space invaders what game. The fuck? So it's just like, hey, what, what are you doing? You're just obviously they don't know how to make Sonic games anymore, and they're just stealing whatever they can, yeah. just like their fandom. <laughs> That's a good point. They had an idea. And it almost, no, even Sonic 1's kind of shit in yeah. retrospect. But, so the fandom's been interesting. Like, they've got some kind of fun things, like the Tails Gets Trolled comic, <laughs> featuring everyone knows Wild E. Coyote, Doug. No, that's uh, Skeeter. Oh, Skeeter. No, noted Sonic the Hedgehog character, Skeeter. Yeah, Trix Miss Rabbit, yeah. Chester Cheetah, Cosmo, Kermit the Frog, and Knuckles, all telling us how to smoke weed and make us smart. Um, in fact, it was so popular, it got an audio book on. No, it's a musical. There you go. Yeah. It's actually pulled on Spotify. You can't listen to it anymore, which is an absolute crime. Total banger. But the fandom makes some less good things, too, um, that we don't really want to talk about because we don't want this to be an 18 up plus panel. But honestly, it's just they, they keep making this content. It doesn't stop. It's... So we need to end it. We need to get rid of Sonic. The thing is, we can't. I mean, he's in fucking Smash Brothers. No, 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 everyone, where's Rayman? Where's Bomberman? Where's Amaterasu from Okami? This is bullshit. Where's Wolfling? Damn straight. Justice for Waluigi. I can't give that panel here because our Waluigi won't come to Bag West. Um, anyway, so I mean, the obvious solution to end Sonic is, you know, this. But, um, you know, due, due to recent treaties, we can't do that. And honestly, if we got rid of Sonic the Hedgehog, the fans, you know, you fucking people would go somewhere else and pollute all the other fandoms with your Sonic the Hedgehog bullshit. And honestly, we can't have that. We have to keep you quarantined in this room. That's why the doors are locked. And you're never going to be able to escape. I've taken... I, I, am, I am here at great personal risk to myself. <laughs> And he's just here because he deserves to be here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we asked ourselves, how do we end a panel about Sonic? So of course we have to end it with a chili dog review. <laughs> Max, did you eat that chili dog the other day? No, I don't. I don't eat beef or pork. All right. Well, I ate a chili dog, and I think it was 7.8 out of 10. Too much Sonic. <laughs> Anyways, thank you all for coming to our panel. We had a good time yelling at you for the last 45 minutes. We hope you enjoyed being yelled at. Um, yeah. So we'd like to, yeah, thank all, everyone who picked on you, including me. 
uh, for liking Sonic. Uh, Sony for ending Sega as a console manufacturer once and for all. Uh, Mag West for deciding this was a good idea. And Snake for having the best matchup against Sonic in Ultimate. Good job, Snake. Uh, anyway, we have uh, two more panels here today. Yeah, if you like this panel, you should consider going to those. If you didn't like this panel, those are better. Go to them anyways. Yeah. So Ash can't catch them at 5.30. Uh, that's about how Ash is a terrible Pokemon trainer. In this room. And fifth gen isn't Pokemon's at 9, and that's about how Pokemon Black and White are bullshit. And you shouldn't play them. Which, uh, you know, people at the room screening I went to last night were very receptive to. So uh, you can follow us on Discord. You can follow us on Twitter. You can go to that meme. Uh, you can ask us questions until they kick us out of the room. If someone in here is the next panelist, you can uh, kick us out too. I don't care. Uh, there's a microphone, so you have to stand up so we can see you and shame you publicly, though. <laughs> Or if you just want to project and you think you're loud enough. No, I don't trust people's ability to project. Eh, especially with masks on, yeah. Yeah, it's hard. <clears throat> Sonic Chronicles, the Dark Brotherhood. That is the question. Oh, God. <laughs> well, first off, it's a part one game that ends on a cliffhanger that there is never going to finish. So there isn't a full plot, so there's not a full game. Why are we going to make a sequel, but Ken Penders happened? If BioWare got bought out by EA, they're never doing that. <laughs> So, did you ever build a tower of Sonic and Knuckles with a bunch of Sonic and Knuckles cartridges? Unfortunately, I got into Sonic with the GameCube, so sadly, no. Um, my first Sonic game was actually uh, and Knuckles. But no, I didn't. Because I never got another Sonic game to stack on top of it. I mean, like, if you stack a bunch of like Sonic and Knuckles cartridges together, uh -huh. and see, like, if you could see how it would run, yeah. and you just kept adding shit to it, like, it'd be like... Oh, that's how we got VR chat. I have time on my hands, apparently. Yeah, have you done it? Yeah. How did it work? Uh, you get, a, you get past, like, several, and it starts getting really glitchy. <laughs> and then you, they start falling over, so you need to have someone hold them. <laughs> That sounds great. Oh my god. Little you need to job. think about the structural integrity of your and knuckles tower. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Have you considered putting a game genie in Jane the middle? Would that help fix it? <laughs> it would probably melt, so I don't know. I mean it's a Genesis. They're worth what, three dollars? <laughs> I just want to let you know you're wrong about Sonic Frontiers. I love that game, and you can't. Did you beat the final boss? Yes, I did. Did you beat the secret final boss? Yes, I did. Why is it, why is it a hacking mini game? Why is it not a boss fight? You it know, every Sonic fight. game your has had a boss fight with Super Sonic, and this game they're like, now we're gonna do that like a couple things, and then the final boss. Yeah, Super Sonic's here, and now it's a hacking mini game. It's like, excuse me? Well, I mean, the music for the bosses. No, the, the music. Find your flame. Sonic, you say more. Sonic's music has always been fantastic, and I will stand by that. So I've always enjoyed it. I want to confirm. I can't remember. Were you the guy who was trying to get into the game shows at Fanime as well? Or was I that some? The game show. Okay, it was someone else. I was going to make fun of you if you were him, too. Oh, I'm out of here. <laughs> Good. That's all it took, Max? You should have done that earlier. Jesus. <laughs> I mean. I will be at fifth jet, so you can't skate. That's fair. I mean, you can just have the staff hold him at the door. Yeah, Andrew, kick his ass if he tries to come in again. Yes. So when you mentioned that Amaratsu was not in Smash Bros, I was like, oh my god. It's bullshit, right? I know. I've been anyway. wanting, I mean, Okami's why I bought a PS2. <laughs> But like, still, like I just it's wanted bullshit, to right? point out that I, I appreciate and that resonates greatly with me. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm, we're not alone. Yes. <laughs> we'll start a letter writing campaign. Indeed. The two of us. We got this. Yes, Thomas. Uh, so for the Sonic movie, they were like Sonic replaceable with like Ben Schwartz, Eggman replaceable, Tails. We gotta keep Tails. Tails. <laughs> Like, why? I mean, I respect it, but eh, why not, not just... I mean, what that means is, like, the standard is wild because, uh, what is it, Charles Meunier? Martinet? I can not I can never get his last name right. Uh, yeah. yeah, he can't voice Mario. But apparently Tails, institution. Honestly, I think it's just because they already had Jim Carrey and Idris Elba. They did not need more name, named actors. <laughs> Yeah, and if you remember, if you've watched the two movies, you'll notice that Sonic has actually a lot less screen time in the second movie, and Eggman has a lot more, because they realize that's what people liked in the first movie. What I hate is, I, I dislike the second movie so much, my favorite part is the wedding. <laughs> it's so fucking dumb. 
It's pretty tough. All right, well. All right, yeah, I think we're done. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all for being here. Have a good night or day. good day. Go to our other panels. They're great.